they told you radiologists would be the first to go. And then maybe pathologists, but your specialty, no, no, that would be safe. It's too human, too complex, too hands-on, right? Wrong. Medicine is far more algorithmic than doctors are willing to admit. And if your job has an algorithm, even one buried under years of training and nuance, AI is coming for it. That means every specialty is on the table. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying it because most doctors are still walking around like AI is some far off sci-fi threat, but it's not. It's already here and it's coming for you too. Let's start with where the AI conversation usually begins, radiology and pathology. Chest x-rays, CT scans, biopsy slides. You can feed millions of these into a model, let it train, and then suddenly it's catching things even the best specialists miss. But the consensus, even from the radiologists and pathologists that I've spoken with who are deeply involved in AI research, isn't that AI is replacing them entirely. Not yet, anyway. It's that AI is becoming the great augmenter. It handles the grunt work, flags subtle anomalies, and enables the human doctor to work faster and more accurately. Now, I know this sounds comforting, but if you think AI is stopping there, you're missing the bigger picture. Because once you understand what made radiology vulnerable, you start to see the same patterns in every other specialty. Here's the key point I want you to grasp. Every single medical specialty, no matter how artistic or human it may seem, has an underlying algorithm at its core. You might call it your clinical intuition, your gut feeling, or your years of experience, but if you peel back the layers, you'll find structured principles. Every diagnosis, every treatment plan, every single decision you make, even the seemingly complex ones, are built on logical steps. And that is why AI is coming for everyone. Of course, real-world medicine isn't just clean logic. It involves incomplete information, social determinants of health, and human complexity. But solving these complications and complexities still requires structured thinking and AI is increasingly being trained to navigate the gray areas too. Now, every specialty is algorithmic, and let me show you what I mean. Take, let's say, internal medicine or family medicine. You're working up a new condition with a differential diagnosis, or maybe you're managing an established chronic condition, you're running through various checklists, and you're adjusting medications or treatment modalities based on guidelines. You go to uptodate.com. And it might feel like you're solving complex cases all day, but the overwhelming majority of that is pattern recognition and rule following. And again, anything that follows a pattern can be modeled, automated, or accelerated. Same with cardiology, which is unique because there's so much money being thrown at America's number one killer, heart disease. You've got your EKGs, your imaging, heart failure protocols, various lab tests and medications. They're all grounded in very high quality randomized controlled trials. And all of this gives doctors and AI a very robust set of rules and principles to follow to best manage someone's heart disease. But see, AI doesn't blink when it has to process a million variables all at once. And it doesn't get tired. It's not going to miss the outliers that you might brush off at the end of a long shift. Now, even surgical fields aren't immune. People generally assume that plastic surgery is all intuition and art. And that is part of it, right? As plastic surgeons do rely on artistic eyes shaped by principles of beauty to guide each decision. But there's actually a science a very precise science to aesthetics, proportions, symmetry, angles, and machines can learn that. Back when I was in plastics, AI it wasn't that big of a deal yet. But now, you can see how machines are taking this foundational understanding to an entirely new level. They're helping plan surgeries, map ideal outcomes, and even guide hands in the operating room. And speaking of specialties built on mastering vast, intricate data, what about oncology? It's a field practically made for AI. You've got massive amounts of data, genomics, pathology reports, imaging, and evolving treatment protocols. It's almost too much for one person to keep up with, but AI can. It can comb through millions of patient records and research papers in seconds, and then recommend a chemo regimen or immunotherapy targets based on patterns that you'd never catch as a human. The reality is that the more complex the data set, the more opportunities that AI has to show its strengths. In fact, some of the fields that we think of as too data dense to automate, like hematology, nephrology, and infectious disease, they're actually precisely the ones where AI would thrive. So the takeaway is clear. If there's logic, sequence, or a decision path, there's always a possibility that AI can learn it and often execute parts of it far faster and more consistently than either you or I can. Now, that doesn't mean AI can handle everything. There will always be edge cases, situations where the protocols fail and doctors have to think outside of the box. But the uncomfortable truth is that those moments are the exception and not the rule. And for the vast majority of cases, AI may eventually handle 
95% of what physicians do, but faster, cheaper, and more consistently. Even gradual changes can have massive ripple effects. And if you're not paying attention, you'll look up one day and realize your role isn't what it used to be. And what about medical education? Even that's changing. AI is already transforming the way that medicine is taught and learned. Simulations, for example, are leveling up. Instead of acting out cases with a tired classmate or stiff actor, actually most of our standardized patients were pretty good. Students can now train with AI-powered virtual patients. And these systems never tire, never forget, and provide real-time comprehensive detailed feedback with actual timestamps as to what you said and how you said it and what you do better. It's wild. Students report that these simulations help them think more critically and ask better questions. The emotional connection still isn't quite like the real thing, but it's getting pretty close, especially with avatars and social robots and advanced language models in the mix. Meanwhile, it's also helping students study smarter. AI-powered platforms can now figure out exactly where you are struggling and build custom study plans to close those gaps. It's no longer about brute forcing flashcards or endless multiple choice. It's targeted, it's adaptive and personalized. So if you're a pre-med, a med student, or even a resident that's watching this, you're already training in a completely different world than the doctors before you. AI is transforming medicine faster than ever before, and we were already in a state of rapid transformation. I mean, just think how far medtech has come over the past one or two decades. When I was in training, the idea of affordably testing and monitoring personalized biomarkers at home wasn't even on my radar. But with the help of cutting edge technology, including AI, patients are now able to receive full picture views of their health with personalized recommendations. And since no two patients are alike, we need to stop treating them that way. I actually discussed this in more detail in this diabetes video and also link in the description. Essentially my South Asian background means that I have very suboptimal genetics for metabolic health compared to the average person. And that's one of the main reasons I was so excited to work with Merrick Health. They use comprehensive blood panels that go well beyond what your average doctor orders to see what's actually going on under the hood. Then you sit down one-on-one -on -one with their physician who interprets those biomarkers and gives you a personalized plan to help you understand where you're at currently and exactly what you can do to improve your health. This way, your health optimization can follow a personalized blueprint rather than some generic protocols. Head to MerrickHealth.com and use code Jabal for 10% off at checkout. And big thanks to Merrick Health for supporting this segment and for helping keep the channel alive. I'm very selective about which brands I choose to work with, which is part of the reason why this channel still costs more money to run than it makes. But despite the cost, don't worry guys, I'm not going anywhere. This is an incredibly turbulent and uncertain time in medicine. And I'm excited to keep bringing you the facts and telling it like it is. But let's get back to AI. What about the fields that we instinctively label as purely human-centric? The ones built by deep conversations, empathy, intricate human connection. Surely AI can't touch those, right? Wrong again. Take psychiatry. The common refrain is, you need a human to connect with a human. And yes, the deep human connection will always matter, but AI is already learning in ways that might surprise you. I advise in a company whose AI chat models allow you to have these realistic, full-blown conversations with emotions, like in the patient, if you say the wrong thing, they'll get angry and it's, it's wild. It's designed to train students on patient encounters. And when you witness it, it is very eye-opening. Even in something as nuanced as psychotherapy, AI can detect subtle emotional cues with remarkable accuracy. In fact, recent studies are emerging that suggest AI may be perceived as more empathetic than human doctors in certain patient interactions. And unlike you, AI has unlimited time, unlimited patience, and isn't burdened by burnout or the time constraints that limit physician empathy. The stuff we think is too complex, too human for AI to touch, turns out that AI might actually handle parts of it better than we ever expected. And then there's emergency medicine. This is where things get real fast. It's high stakes, rapid decisions, constant chaos, and a perfect playground for AI. AI will not replace the doctor making that final call or the surgeon performing an emergency procedure, but it can be an incredible force multiplier in all that chaos. It can instantly triage patients, pull relevant data in real time, flag dangerous drug interactions, and even guide a medical assistant through the initial workup. That frees the physician to focus on what actually requires human judgment, the hands-on stuff, the life or death decisions. And in a setting where every second counts, that makes a massive difference. And then primary care. These doctors are the ultimate generalists. One minute, it's a sore throat. The next, it's managing five chronic conditions in a single visit. And that's exactly why AI fits in so well here. It can take care of repetitive tasks like scheduling follow-ups, checking medication adherence, 
sending reminders for blood pressure checks, and staying on top of updated guidelines faster than any of us can. That's great in theory, it frees up doctors to spend more time on what actually matters. But if AI handles the simple, billable cases, what's left for the human? The tougher, messier, less profitable ones. That changes how a primary care practice operates and it could impact how doctors get paid. Still, before we get carried away, let's be clear, AI will not change medicine overnight. Healthcare is very slow to change, often painfully slow. It's a risk-averse system built on layers of regulation. Every new tool has to clear legal, ethical, and safety hurdles before it's widely adopted. There's also the messy reality of liability. Who's responsible if AI makes a mistake? Is it the doctor, the hospital, the company that made the AI tool? Right now, no one really knows. And until we do, no AI is getting licensed, reimbursed, or left unsupervised. Then there's the pushback. Doctors aren't just going to stand by while their roles get redefined. Expect resistance from unions, advocacy groups, and professional organizations, all concerned about job loss, patient trust, and the erosion of the doctor-patient relationship. But don't mistake slow for impossible. The pressure to cut costs and boost efficiency, it's not going anywhere. And once the economics catch up with the tech, things are going to move fast. Because, let's not kid ourselves, healthcare is a business. In the current model, the goal isn't to make your life easier, it's to cut costs, boost efficiency, and scale. And if an algorithm can do more than half your job, faster, cheaper, and more consistently, what happens next? Even if it's just augmenting you, that still changes your value in the system. You're no longer an indispensable doctor. You're one of many, assisted by tech, doing the work of 5 or 20. That means fewer job openings, smaller residency classes, and less demand. You don't need as many physicians if each one can carry exponentially more volume. And this isn't just theoretical. Once AI proves itself, hospitals, clinics, and startups will start restructuring around it. Some specialties may even become fully computer-driven. We're not there yet, but we're closer than most are willing to admit. We'll be getting into that exact scenario in a future video, so subscribe and stay tuned. AI is quietly rewriting what your job looks like and how many people will be needed to do it. We can't afford to be naive. Future doctors must adapt and evolve. That starts with sharpening the skills that AI still struggles with, such as real-time decision-making, reading between the lines, and managing uncertainty. When a patient's story doesn't line up with the labs or when something just feels off, AI can't help you as much there. The art of medicine, empathy, active listening, and leading a care team are uniquely human and these skills will become even more valuable as AI's role in medicine continues to evolve. This is where you can differentiate yourself. At the same time, you have to understand how these tools work. No one's saying you have to become a programmer, but you do need to sharpen your ability to at least use AI. Know where it's strong, where it fails, and how it's being used in medicine and in your specialty. If you're a pre-med or a med student, Becoming data literate can actually help you get more publications, and that's huge for both med school and residency competitiveness. Shameless plug to the ultimate research course at Med School Insiders, which you can find right here. Those are the exact tactics that you can use to actually get dozens of research items to boost your competitiveness to get into a better med school or a better residency. Click the link below to learn more. Now, beyond that, begin to think with an open mind and consider the possibilities of the future. Your career in medicine is going to evolve at a faster pace than ever before. AI is here. It's already changing how medicine works. So the goal isn't to fight it, it's to stay ahead of it. Learn how to lead in a system that leverages AI strategically. That's how you stay valuable and in the game. If this sparks some ideas, or even some pushback, drop a comment below. There's plenty more to discuss about AI and the complex future of medicine, so if you want to hear more about that, check out my free weekly newsletter link below.